I look at a lot of online message boards and Facebook posts by people who are getting into rod building. One thing that comes up over and over again is small trim bands. One of the questions I see asked most frequently is, can I use a small drop of super glue on my trim bands to keep them from moving around? Uh, a lot of people recommend putting color protectant on top of the trim bands to keep them from moving around. And there's nothing wrong with doing that with a color protectant. You can do that. The most important thing is that you do things the way you need to do in order to get the results you want. You'll hear a lot of opinions on things and none of that matters if it doesn't work for you. I'm gonna show you how I wrap my small trim bands and I do it tightly enough to where they don't really move around a whole lot unless you want them to. I think it works really well and I think it's fairly easy for most people to figure out how this works just by looking at what I'm doing on this video. If you haven't seen the way I've done it before, maybe something will work for you that you see on this video and maybe it won't. It's important to look at a lot of different ways of doing things, especially as you're just getting started out. I'm just going to start this trim band out by wrapping the way I'd wrap anything else. I pretty much start out the same way. I leave my tag ends long so I've got something to work with after I transition to the next color. And on this trim band, I'm going to use three wraps for the trim band because this is really thin diameter thread that I'm using. It's actually thinner than size A rod wrapping thread. A single trim band with this thread doesn't look all that good. You can barely see it. So three wraps looks about the equivalent of a single wrap of size D thread. I'm going to pull my tag in out to the side and tape it down to the blank. And that is off camera. You can't see it, but there's a piece of masking tape holding that tag in down in a straight line down the blank there. Now I'm going to take my thread and just space it out some, wrap it around the blank a few times, pull it out to the side right below where my initial tag end is. And this will create a second tag end that's part of the trim band on this wrap. And I'll tape it down to the blank as well. And then I'll go ahead and cut that off right where I taped it. And the next thing I'll do is bring in my primary color for this wrap right in behind that trim band. And I'll get that wrap started and straighten up a little here and there as I go, both with my fingernail. And I'll also be using a very small knitting needle. It's an aluminum knitting needle. And these are made to work with yarn. So they're very smooth and they won't fray yarn so they're not going to hurt these threads if you use it to burnish a little or to move some threads around with one of those you'll be just fine and you'll see as i get this started i'm not terribly concerned about leaving some small gaps here and there because i can go back and straighten that out later i am trying to wrap fairly tightly against itself it's a little less work you don't want too many gaps or too big of a gaps between the threads because then it can be difficult to to get those out without loosening something else up but i'm using a fairly good amount of tension both on the trim band and the primary color here as well and that helps hold everything together pretty tightly and I'll still have a little wiggle room once I get started moving some threads around here and there to close out any gaps and I'm just continuing this wrap a little bit at a time here straightening it up a little bit as I go like I said before both with my fingernails and I'll also use a knitting needle from time to time Once I get about five wraps or so along with this primary color, I'll start straightening up my tag ends. I'd intentionally left my tag ends long so I've got something to hold on to while I'm doing this. But I'm going to just try to have all three of these tags line up with each other in the same spot. And that would be on the dirty side of my wrap that's where you try to keep all your tag ends lined up with each other on on each end of the wrap on whatever type of rod you're building you ordinarily put the dirty side of your wraps on the side that's facing the ground as someone's fishing while you're holding the rod in your hand that way it's not visible to the person using the rod while they're actually using it
as you're pulling these tag ends around, you might notice some gaps start showing up on your wrap from where the thread is being pulled through a little bit more. It's really not that big of a deal. You just close those up using a tool of some sort or your fingernail, get those gaps closed back up again. It was loose enough to move while you pulled the tag in, so it's loose enough to move afterwards too. You just gotta manipulate the thread a little bit, but everything will look better if you get all these tags together in, in one group here. Once you kind of get those gaps closed back out and get everything straightened up fairly well, then you can go ahead and cut those tag ends off. You might have noticed earlier I was actually using those tag ends to pull just a little against the thread just to help close all those little gaps out. Uh, you'll kind of learn different ways of manipulating the thread. The more you do this, you'll find what works well and what doesn't work well for you. There'll be a little bump under the wrap, and that's why they call that side of the wrap the dirty side of the wrap, where the tag ends run underneath the threads. It sticks up just a little bit, and you may need to manipulate the thread in that area a little bit to help close out the gaps as you go and kind of pack it in as you go. Once you get past that, it'll be a lot smoother sailing for you. It's not a big deal. It's just something you need to be aware of. You'll see that I'm using this knitting needle that I was telling you about. Those actually work pretty well. They're kind of rounded on the end, so you can kind of poke at your thread a little bit if you need to with a, a little bit more of a pointed part, but it's not a sharp point like a needle that could possibly damage your thread. It's a blunt, rounded off point. The tapered area that's kind of like a sharpened pencil is handy for holding at an angle to burnish your threads with your tool at a slight angle and you can lay it on its side and use the side to burnish with also. They're just a handy little tool to keep around. I use them some. I, I use a lot of different things. Sometimes I don't use anything other than my fingernails. I've used the side of an ink pen to burnish with. It really doesn't matter as long as what you're using doesn't damage your thread. And that kind of ties back into what I was saying at the beginning of the video. It really doesn't matter how you get to where you, you get at the end. All that matters is the results. If it looks good and it's structurally sound, your wrap, it's not going to come apart on you while you're fishing or anything like that. That's all that really matters. People get so hung up on you have to do things this way, this way, this way, and that's just not the case a lot of the times. Usually there are multiple ways to achieve the same result. That's why I suggest you don't just look at my videos. You look at somebody else's too, and you might pick up something that helps you out because that's how I learn. I watched videos, I read articles, I read a lot of forums and things like that. And over time, I just kind of developed my own technique in large part just by taking bits and pieces from here and there that worked for me and combining them all together. And that's how I do the things I do now. So I hope these videos are helping you out. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If it did help you out, if you're not a subscriber already, please do that. I really appreciate it, and it helps me out a lot with the YouTube wizardry that goes on that determines who gets to see what video and all that sort of thing. If you could, just subscribe and like. And if you really like the video and think it might help somebody else out, just share it with them as well. Y'all take care, and I'll talk to y'all later.